Hi, I'm Miss Susan from the Milmer County Public Library and this is Summer Reading. Now Miss Molly, if you need to register for our summer reading program, you can visit our website. And Miss Susan's going to read us a fun story. This is called The Prince Ribbit. It's written by Jonathan Emmett, illustrated by Polly Burns. And this is with permission from Macmillan Publishing. The Princess and the Frog Prince got married and lived happily ever after read Princess Arabella, closing the book with a satisfied sigh. <sighs> Princess Lucinda frowned. That silly girl treated the Frog Prince so badly she was lucky he even married her. If I ever meet a talking frog, I wouldn't make the same mistake, agreed Arabella. Princess Martha rolled her eyes. She liked facts more than fairy tales and real frogs more than enchanted ones. She'd heard a real frog croaking in the royal pond many times, but she could never spot him. He's a clever little thing, thought Martha. Martha was right. The frog was very clever indeed. He often listened to the sister's stories, and the more he heard of princess and princesses, the more he longed to live like one. The frog dreamed of sleeping in a soft bed, eating fine foods, and wearing a beautiful crown, and he just come up with a cunning plan to make his dream come true. Eee, yuck! Go away, you slimy little beast, shrieked Arabella and Lucinda as the frog hopped in front of them. But the frog did not go away. Instead, he cleared his throat <clears throat> and spoke. Allow me to introduce myself, said the sly frog. My name is Prince Ribbit. Arabella and Lucinda stared open mouth, but Martha delighted. It's a frog, she shouted, a talking frog. Actually, I'm an enchanted prince, he said. A jealous wizard turned me into a frog because I was so astonishingly handsome. If only there was a way to break the spell. But there is, cried Lucinda, it's in this book. You just need to be looked after by a pretty princess like me. Or a pretty princess like me, said Arabella, and then you'll turn back into your old, astonishingly handsome self, and we can live happily ever after. Lucinda and Arabella took Prince Ribbit back to the palace and gave him whatever he wanted. Lucinda let him sleep on her pillow, while Arabella let him eat from her plate. But the more Princess Martha looked at the frog, the more suspicious she became. Why are you making such a fuss over him? She asked Prince Ribbit as he hopped around the dining, the dining table. Because he's an enchanted prince, said Arabella, and that's how you break the spell. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, said Martha. And with that, she went to the Royal Library to look up the truth about frogs. A mother frog lays eggs, she explained to her sisters. Then the frog turns into tadpoles, and the tadpoles turns into frogs. But frogs don't ever turn into prince to princesses. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, replied her sisters. So Lucinda and Arabella continued to pamper Princess Ribbit, Prince Ribbit. They let him sleep in the biggest, softest bed and gave him the finest clothing and a beautiful new crown. Martha was the only person who saw Prince Ribbit for what he really was. You may be clever, but you're just an ordinary frog, she insisted. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, said Prince Ribbit. This is hopeless, thought Martha. My sisters will never believe me, no matter how many books of facts I show them. But I suppose I'm as stubborn. I never read their storybooks. Perhaps I should. So Martha gathered a big pile of fairy tales and began to read. She was surprised to find out that while the stories might not be true, they were often funny, exciting, and inspiring. And after Martha had read them all, she knew exactly what to do with Prince Ribbit. If you're really an enchanted prince, why hasn't the spell been broken? Martha asked Prince Ribbit the next morning. Prince Ribbit shifted uneasily in his little golden throne and adjusted his little golden crown. Perhaps it's because I've not been treated well enough, he suggested. You seem very well treated to me, said Martha. I think it's time to try something different. What's the one thing that will always break an evil spell? 
True love's kiss, cried Arabella and Lucinda. Me first, said Arabella, planting a big wet smacker on Prince Ribbit's clammy cheek. You don't love him as much as I do, said Princess Lucinda, snatching the frog from her sister and squashing his face in a passionate smooch. But no matter how many kisses they gave him, Prince Ribbit remained very much a frog. And in the end, both princesses realized that this was all he'd ever been and all he'd ever be. I suppose I should go back to my pond, sighed the frog, taking off his beautiful crown. But he looked so sad that Martha couldn't help feeling sorry for him. Please don't go, she said. Any animal smart enough to fool my sisters would be fun to have around. And while I might not, have a, might not want a handsome prince as a husband, I'd love to have a clever frog as a friend. She picked up the frog and gave him a gentle kiss. The instant Martha kissed him, a huge puff of pink smoke, appe smoke appeared and the frog turned into a handsome young prince. In fact, he was so handsome that Martha decided that she did want to marry him after all. So she fell into his arms and they both lived happily ever after. And if that's not the ending that you were expecting, then remember, just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true. Miss Molly has crafts for us next. All right. This week we have a bunch of different crafts based on your age group. For our 18 month to five year old group, we will have a sticker scene. You will take the stickers and to create your very own fairy tale scene. And some of you will be able to make your very own Prince Ribbit. You have a head, a frog head, and a body. And a little paper fastener. Whoops. That looks like this. You'll poke it through the head. And then through the body. And fold it down in the back so it looks like that. Some of, you, some of you will have a foam crown. And the first thing you need to do is poke out all of these little diamonds in the middle of the spikes. out you can set them aside or you can use them to decorate your crown you'll just have to glue them on next we're going to take some glitter shapes and stick them across the bottom of our crown Ms. Susan will you help me with those please I will all of your little foam stickers across the bottom. I need to flip it over and take this little piece of paper off. Because that has some tape on it. And you'll use that to put it around your head. Oh, I got some on this side too. Next, some 
one of you chose either a shield or a wand as your craft. If you chose the shield, you'll need to decorate it. You can paint it, use crayons or markers. And once you're finished with that, you'll need to glue the strap on the back so you can stick your arm through it. And you'll want it to stick up just a little bit so your arm can fit through. Thank you. And we'll just tape that in. Just like that. So then you can hold your arm through it. You chose the wand, you got a stick with some ribbon, a star, and some foam stickers. First you'll need to color your star or decorate it however you want. Then you can use your stickers So your decorated sign is facing down, and we're going to glue, or not glue, we're taping the stick to the back of this star. You might want to use extra tape so it holds. And there's your fairy wand. Okay, if you are in our third to fifth grade group. Instead of a foam crown, you've got a paper crown that you can decorate. You can color it and we also have included some gems for you to stick on there. And these just stick right down. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.